So look, there's a lot of people up here on stage today, okay? And I just have one thing to say that we need to keep in mind as we get ready to march. As goes New York City, as goes New York State, so goes the country. We have had a good year, a really, really good year. We now have over one quarter of union members here in this city that are proud to be part of organized labor. And we've been able to accomplish a lot, a real lot, because of our partners in government. And there's no greater partner that we have that has worked with us throughout the year to accomplish so much, including what started last year on this day to fight for the $15 an hour minimum wage for everybody. Then our governor, Andrew Cuomo. People take notice of what happens in New York City and New York State, and they take notice that we're getting things done. Government is working because of our partner up in Albany, the governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Now, to kick it off, because I know there's a lot of building trades guys in front of us, the great leader of the New York City Building Trades Council, my dear friend, and the former president, people forget, Gary's worn a lot of hats, the former president of the New York City Central Labor Council too, my dear friend, our fearless leader, Gary LaBarbera. Thank you very much, Vinny. Good morning, brothers and sisters. How are we all doing this morning? All right, you know, Vinny said one thing, that in the state of New York, last year we had one of our greatest years. I'm here to tell you today, every one of you, the reason that we had that success is because of the man standing right here. It's our great governor of the state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Now let me tell you a few things that you may or may not know. Our governor has the most robust infrastructure plan in the entire United States of America for the state of New York. Over $100 billion of construction that will be built, all building trades. This will result in tens of thousands of jobs. We're talking about LaGuardia Airport. We're talking about Penn Farley. We're talking about the new expansion on the Javits Center. We're talking about 32 new transit stations. The list goes on and on and on. He understands the importance of good, strong, middle-class jobs. And he's a true leader, not only in this state, but in this nation, because he wants to put people to work and rebuild our infrastructure. That's the kind of governor we need, and that's the kind of governor we will always support. Another thing you should know, that the developers in this city have been getting a tax benefit for a number of years. And it's turned into essentially a slush fund for them. And they take this tax money, these abatements, and their whole goal was to build non-union. Our governor stood up with the building trades and said, no way, that there must be wage standards. And has committed never to sign a bill unless the building trades in New York City are satisfied with the wage standards. Brothers and sisters, you cannot ask for more than that. So let me just conclude by saying, for me personally, I have become very good friends with the governor. He has always had an open door for many years, always takes time to answer the phone, and always cares about one thing about above everything else. It's about the people of the state of New York, and it's about supporting unions and building a strong middle class. Brothers and sisters, it is now my pleasure to introduce from you the president of 1199 SEIU, Brother George Gresham. George! Thank you, Reverend LaBarber. Um, thank God for New York. New York is a state that stands up and welcomes working people. 
And that is because we have a chief executive officer, our governor, that believes in the right to dignity and work. I am here on behalf of the 450,000 1199 members to say that in New York we have the number one workers governor in the United States. Now we are in New York, we're not afraid of competition. I welcome particularly in the other states that we represent members any governor to challenge Governor Cuomo on the legislation that they will stand up for working people. On behalf of Governor Cuomo, we accept that challenge. Because we know what it's like for working people to have dignity in the work. We know what it feels like when you work hard every day and you still can't take care of your family. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We have no problem in this country with corporations making big profits. But you cannot do it on the backs of workers. And we are here today to say that we have a governor that has proved that in more ways than just words. I had the pleasure of going around New York State with this governor from county to county in order to get our state legislators to agree that all working people in the state of the New York deserve as a minimum $15 an hour. Now, y'all know that I have a short temper, and it's hot as hell out of here already. And so if y'all don't wake up, you're going to make me start cussing to get your attention. We're talking about issues that are important for working people. Today is Labor Day, and we... governor in New York. Now, that's something that the other 49 states cannot brag about. And so let's not take this moment for granted. Let's stand up and let our voices be heard for the governor in these United States that has says, I'm ready to stand up for working people. That I'm ready in the state of New York to make sure that if you have a job, you also will have dignity and you can take care of your family. And that as long as I am governor, and we hope that to be a very long time, that working people will get the justice and the dignity that they deserve. The good thing about raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour in New York, we hope that what happens in New York does not stay in New York. I said, what happens in New York does not stay in New York. No, 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 no. I said what happens in New York does not stay in New York. Without further ado, before we all melt out here, I want to bring the champion of working people one who there is no doubt that when he raises his voice, when he gives his commitment to working people, he will do whatever is necessary to deliver. And so we thank you, Governor Cuomo, 
we thank you because you are following the lessons of another great Governor Cuomo, Mario Cuomo, in your fight for economic justice. And so, sisters and brothers, let's show our love to the number one governor in the United States of America, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Brother George Gresham. Brother Gary LaBarbera. Brother Vinny Alvarez. Brother Mario Salento. Our chairman, Brother Callahan. My friends, it is hot and it is simple. First, today, we honor the men and women of labor who built this state and made it the greatest state in the United States of America. Second, we are at an important moment in history in this nation, not just in this state. You see all the political turmoil out there? You see all the anger, all the frustration, all the anxiety? That's because the majority of workers in this nation are not happy. They believe they have been left behind. They believe they've been getting a raw deal. They believe productivity has been going up and they're not getting their share of the pie. And they believe the American dream is not a reality for them. And you know what? They are right. This economy has not been fair to the working men and women of this nation. They have been going backwards for decades. And they're saying enough is enough. And we in New York are saying enough is enough. Brother George, Brother George is right. Let the corporations make money. Let people make millions of dollars, that's what this country's about. But, but, be fair to the workers who built this country and built this state. And the working men and women deserve a fair deal and a fair wage. They made this state, they made this nation, and we're not gonna forget it. And that's the fight in New York. That's what this is about in New York. We understand the economic injustice. We see it, and the legacy of New York is we're going to do something about it. And you take progressive government leadership and progressive union leadership, you put those two things together, it is a coalition that is unstoppable and unbeatable. And brother, brother Vinny Alvarez is right. We had one heck of a year. We had one heck of a year, and it's resonating all across the country. And the constant theme of everything we did, economic justice, standing up for the working man and the working woman, and restoring faith in our economic system. We started with $15 minimum wage, highest in the United States of America, Brother George. Brother George Gresham, the AFL-CIO, we went all across this state. And you know what we did? We woke up the sleeping giant. And the sleeping giant are the men and women of this state. And we said, you want to make a difference? Let this state lead by paying a minimum wage that is fair for all so someone can work and still buy food and pay rent and put away money for their retirement and the college. And that's the $15 minimum wage. They said we couldn't do it. We said we could. We organized, we fought, and we set a new record, $15 minimum wage. That's how it started.
But then we worked with unions like 32BJ and we passed the best paid family leave program in the United States of America. We worked with our WDSU and we stopped the ex we stopped workers from being exploited by unscrupulous employers. We the exploited worker task force. We had a great year with it and we're going to do even more next year. We said that we deserve and we demand a fair wage for all workers. And that's what we did with the TWU on their MTA contract. That's what we did. That's what we did when we raised the tip wage for hotel and restaurant workers unions. That's what we did with the steel workers when we saved the jobs at Alcoa. That's what we did with the firefighters when we said families deserve a three-quarter disability. That's the fight we have with the police when we say the police deserve a three-quarter disability package. And that's what we did when we said we're going to rebuild this state. Roads, bridges, LaGuardia Airport, Long Island Railroad, but we're doing it with union labor and PLAs because they are the best in the country. And that's what we did when we said we're going to build affordable housing and we believe in affordable housing, but it has to be real affordable housing for people who really need it. And we're going to build it union because nobody builds it better than union. And we are not, we are not going to allow a government program start a race to the bottom in wages. We want to have a government program that enforces fair wages for all. And this hand will not sign a bill that doesn't provide for union labor. And this, as you heard from Brother George and from Vinny Alvarez, this is a New York fight. But it's not just a New York fight. The history of New York, the legacy of New York is what we do, people notice, and the nation follows. We're going to restore fairness for workers in this state, and it's going to echo all across the country. If we stand together, we will not lose. When we organize, we win. This is the most, this is the most unionized state in the nation. The most unionized state in the nation. We bring that AFL-CIO together. You put the public unions together with the private unions. We lock arm, we lock arms, we march forward. Nobody's going to beat us. We're going to do it in New York, and we're going to show this nation what a fair economy is all about. It starts today again. Progressive government, progressive labor, we're not going to be, be, be defeated. Thank you, and God bless you. Brothers and sisters, before we go, let me just say this. Brothers and sisters, we won these battles because we joined together as one state, public sector, private sector, building trades, pulling together. Brothers and sisters, we're never satisfied because we're not just fighting for ourselves, right, we're fighting for our families, yeah. our children, and future generations. Right, <laughs> when we stand together and join together and fight together and raise our voices together, we win. Working men and women win. And brothers and sisters, we're not satisfied. And I know the governor's not satisfied. So let me just ask you now, as we get ready to march in this great parade, are we going to stand together moving forward? Yeah. Are we going to join together? Yeah. Are we going to fight together? Yeah. Are we going to raise our voices together? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, stand tall, stand proud, stand united. Let's show the rest of the country who we are and what we're made of. Let's have a great day and let's go march! Yeah.